Okay, so the jury and then the alternates, they return to the courtroom. Remember, everyone is sequestered during all of this, and this is just the, the, the guilt phase um, or innocence phase, and then we go into the penalty phase. Um, watching along with us is still um, National Trial Attorney Michael Jaffer here in studio. So, um, doesn't really seem like we got much done if we're that jury at this point. If they're asking for further instructions after the amended indictment, which is the reason why the defense wanted the case thrown out, but um, your thoughts? Uh, you know, Michael Ayala teased me a couple of weeks ago about this case, said I'm on an island because I was the last attorney in the world that believes he still has a, a chance. I can confirm that the island has gotten lonelier with these jury instructions. There's nobody on it but me. I still believe that the case has not been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. I think it's beyond a shadow of a doubt that he conspired after the fact to cover up these murders. But I just don't think it, it, it has been proven. And so with these jury instructions, I kind of feel like the jury's doing their job. You're right. We haven't covered a lot of ground. Some people thought the jury would have already come back with a with a you know a verdict of guilty um, I think that they're doing their job and I, I'm, I'm heartened to see that well you know the big difference here is that this is a death penalty case and you know the jury's being sequestered a lot of big differences there was more testimony the defense actually put on a case yeah. so there's a lot more to consider right because the last trial with Lori Vallow that was eight hours and 33 minutes we just started up that deliberation clock right here on our screen so we are at four hours and eight minutes we'll keep you posted well, All right, during the sidebar there, that's a perfect time to discuss what we're just hearing in this key testimony, clearly a key witness in the case, still with us in studios, National Trial Attorney Michael Jaffer. Thanks for being with us. So um, you were having a lot of reaction to the testimony, especially when she was characterizing and phrasing the nature of their relationship and uh, the victim wanting to leave. So I'm saying you probably would have been objecting. I would have been objecting a lot because there was a lot of questions in there that were just beyond outrageous hearsay. Could she afford an attorney? No, she couldn't afford it. How do you know? How do you really know? Were you looking at her bank statements? Why didn't her defense attorney, and he's doing an okay job, why didn't he stand up and say, how do you know she couldn't afford it? You didn't have access to her bank account. You, how would you know any of this stuff, right? But that testimony is so key for the prosecution yes. in this case because they needed to establish that she wanted to leave him and then that was going to be the motive, right, for the murder. A absolutely. Look, here's it. the purpose of a statement is to be admitted into evidence to prove the underlying truth of what the statement purports, right? She was making a bunch of statements that could not be, she would have no access to know whether or not they were they were true and she didn't have direct knowledge of it. So this witness right here is being, is, is very bad for the defense. And I don't think the defense attorney is handling it properly. Well, we're gonna see that cross-examination later today. All right, uh, we're hitting the pause button. We're gonna have more testimony out of Tennessee, the volunteer state in the Karen Swift murder trial when we come back. Okay, so now the jury has heard this twice, right? From the husband and then now the wife, Kathy, that's on the stand right now. Uh, does that really move the ball a lot for the prosecution? I think it does, and I'll tell you why. It's now, it's, it's, it's credible evidence now because both husband and wife have said it. $2,000 back in 2012 in Tennessee is like the modern day equivalent of like five or $7,000. Also, it makes me think, you know, why wait this long to bring, I mean, with, with, with this evidence and with the motive, because motive sometimes is difficult to prove. With all the motive evidence, I don't know why the state of Tennessee waited so long, over a decade, to bring these charges. But yeah, the $2,000, both husband and wife saying they loaned her the money, that fits right in line with the amount of money you'd need to get a divorce, a proper divorce, back in 2012. So it's not lining up very well for the defendant. I'm wondering if the kids are going to testify as well to talk about the nature of the relationship. She was a mother of four. A lot of times women stay in abusive relationships because of uh, family, friends, and also pets even um, in their household. But um, what, are you, what do you see as the biggest challenges for this particular case? Because we are looking at a case that was a cold case. He was indicted in 20, uh, you know, 2022. Um, this happened in 2011. What challenges do you see? There's only one challenge, and it's a big one, is the lack of forensic evidence from waiting that long. That's the only thing, right? However, they don't have to prove, they don't have to show, all they have to do is prove that nobody else could have committed this murder except for him, and he had the incentive and the, and the motive, and nobody else would have done it. Uh, but the only challenge would really be the forensic evidence. If there, there's a lack of it, 
and they finish their case, that would be the challenge. So the jury heard um, heard from this defendant already because they played at least one of the two um, interrogation videos where he's limping around on crutches, and that's part of his um, alibi is that he couldn't have done anything to her because he had a bad knee or something like that. So do you see him testifying? Would you put him on the stand? You know what? If the if the defense, if it comes down to if it comes down to basically motive, my personal preference is defendants should if they have a clean record, they should always testify if they're accused of the death of a loved one. I always want to see defendants on the stand crying. It's Wait a sign. second. Uh, you ask them to testify? Would, Usually it's the I, opposite for a defense I, I, attorney. I, I would want them to testify, and here's why. I want the jury to see you sobbing and crying. Because they saw the gossip from the friends. I want to see it. All right. Michael Jaffer is going to be sticking with us. Uh, you don't go anywhere. You at home. We have a lot more out of Tennessee in the trial here playing out in the Karen Swift murder trial. Thanks for being with us. The first thing I want to ask about is something that Kathy Bona, the friend, said on direct examination because we got to hear something the defendant said in his own words. She testified he called her after she got home from church. Have you seen Karen? The car's on the side of the road. And she said he always knew where she was. That's a glimpse of what his version of what happened is. What are your thoughts around that? I think that there's, there's only two universes, one where he did it, one where he didn't do it. If he did do it, then him ca calling her would be him basically knowing that this is going to be the main person that's going to complain about me. Let me go ahead and pretend like, I, like I'm shocked like everybody else. Let me call her. In the universe where he didn't do it, he also knew that this would be the person that might know where she is. Um, so for now, I, I just, I'm, I'm, it's still early in the case. I feel like this could cut <clears throat> against him. <clears throat> I think Sorry. it's something in our studio. Yeah. I think we're yeah. both having that. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Apologies. Yeah. I think it could cut against them, uh, uh, depending on how the balance of the evidence shakes out. That's All right. <clears throat> so let's talk now about generally trial skills. A lot of objections from the defense attorney, but you noted you've also seen opportunities where they are not objecting, and you would. You know what? The defense attorney, there. I got to a point where I would have just screamed, stood up and screamed gossip. I know that's not an objection. <laughs> I would have stood up. I, I've been in situations where I've stood up and said, Your Honor, this is just gossip, right, as a way of belittling the other side and saying, this is beyond hearsay. This is just gossip, the stuff about the bank account. She couldn't afford her own attorney. I mean, you don't know. You're not looking at her bank statement. So uh, I think that the defense attorneys are missing a lot of uh, easy, low-hanging fruit opportunities. And it's going to be interesting to see how they actually handle her on cross. Will yeah. they use kid gloves? Are they going to be aggressive and <laughs> Go after we're gonna have to see and we get to do that together now let's go back in for the cross-examination you haven't missed any of it of the victim's friend Kathy Bona now still with us national trial attorney Michael Jaffer all right Michael after watching some of the cross-examination do you think it's effective is it moving the ball for the defense at all I think so because I hadn't even thought about the fact that maybe perhaps you know this uh, witness would have had some sort of a an affair some sort of a you know different type of relationship with her the fact that I didn't think about it and they're bringing that into my my mind they would have done that into the jury's mind so I think it's somewhat effective Besides, it's the only card you can play. Yeah, and there's some testimony that Karen was naked. And so, you know, all of that, I think, just kind of clouds the mm -hmm. issue. How hard is it when you have a defendant who isn't arrested for almost 10 years later and charged with a crime like murder, 10 years, and not only is it 10 years of lost evidence and forensics, but also 10 years of advances in technology mm -hmm. that may or may not work now to help evidence for the state I think is very difficult and I'm still puzzled as to why they waited so long because really there was no other you know type of conceivable you know person you could look at other than her husband um, and given the fact that sh this woman also spoke to the police and she would have pointed the finger right at her husband because she clearly detests this guy right so I think it's very difficult I don't know why they waited that long but yeah forensic is very difficult every 10 years or so it becomes more and more impossible to the point of just being impossible. He, of course, says that he didn't do it, and the state is saying, yes, he did. It was a blunt force injury. So somebody killed her, arguably, mm -hmm. right? It's murder. Did he do it or not? Right now, I just don't think in the last few seconds that the state's put up enough yet yeah. to prove it. Your thoughts? I don't, think that, I don't think they've proven it yet, but I think that they've basically created the specter of where they've definitely proven motive, in my opinion. Yeah. But you need more than motive. I don't think they're there yet, but I think it's still early. We're going to see what they do after this. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Michael Jaffer, for joining us and being here on set.